All right, guys, then we are here for the main event. So I get invited to this beautiful house of mosquito. There's a film crew. They're hoping to do a show on Netflix of some of the most impactful people in the world. And they asked if they could come film what we're doing on the island, which is like the greatest honor. And I thought it was great. And then they said, oh, we, we know a guy, he's your neighbor, you should meet him. And I was like, okay, cool. I can make it to dinner. And I walk in and then this mind is just like the way he thinks, how he started his company, what he's doing. And I was like, I feel like I've heard of this guy. And then I find out I have been obsessed with his work for years. I literally have been playing a game on the island since we opened called Moonshots. And he wrote the book. <laughs> I'm like, what? So I'm so excited to introduce you all to Naveen Jain. He is going to talk to us today about redefining what is possible. I would argue one of the most impactful people existing on the planet today. And I'm so grateful that you took the time to talk to all of us. Well, Brittany, it's really, <clears throat> excuse me, first of all, my voice seems to be somehow gone. It's been singing every night. That's parting with her. It's just really hard. <laughs> uh, but I want you to know that, you know, it's very hard to get a brown guy to blush. And she, she sees amazing things about everyone. So it makes me blush. So thank you, Brittany. I say amazing things about you. I'm hard to impress. Oh. I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give you a little background on him. His real philosophy is helping people boost themselves out of poverty is the best way to make lasting positive difference in a person's life. And that is what we stand for as G-Force. None of us believe in handouts. We all want to do hand ups. And it's important to create the businesses, the sustainable businesses that can help do that. So he is the founder of, it's always on Zoom, everything's right in the way, founder of Viome and Moon Express. So he's an entrepreneur and philanthropist. He's dedicated to solving the biggest challenges. And it's so much fun to be in the room with other people that think like this. And they don't just think like this, they're doing it. And they're creating multi-billion dollar companies that are just solving the problems. They don't talk about it, they do it. And it's like one conversation around the table, it's like, oh, my people, my people. And so I just wanna challenge you all. The right rooms will recognize you and you won't be crazy <clears throat> to them. So I want you to tell us a little yeah. bit more about Viome, why you started, and Moon Express. Where did these crazy ideas come from? Were you born into a rich family and you just had everything given to you and you took it to the next family? Like, what, what's your deal? Well, Brittany, first of all, <clears throat> there has never been a better time to be alive. There is never been so many opportunities being created. And the reason is that technology is growing exponentially. And we have a confluence of the technologies that is allowing us to solve the problem that was never possible. It used to be, <clears throat> people will say, someone started this company already. They are so far ahead of us, right? Now, that is a sign of weakness because if somebody is four years ahead of you, that means they are at least four years closer to being dead because every four to five years, the technology moves so far out that they are essentially become a dinosaur. Oh, snap. Right. And the fact is half of the Fortune 500 companies will be dead in the next 10 to 15 years, right? And I can give you the framework that I use for every company I start. And I think this is fundamentally every one of you should ask. Before you start any project, I don't care what you do in life, ask yourself three questions. Why this? Why now? Why me? And why this is really simple. Whatever the problem is, you write down that problem and you say, God forbid, I'm actually successful in solving this problem. Mm. Would it help a billion people live a better life? You don't worry about how, you don't care about it. You say, even if I'm successful in solving this problem, would it help a billion people live a better life? And the reason for doing so is not because you're a philanthropic person trying to help a billion people. But the fact is, Anything you do that improves the life of a billion people, you can create a $500 billion company. But you don't start in the morning and say, I want to create a $500 billion company. What should I do? It is a byproduct. It's an outcome. Just enjoy what you're doing. Find out what is it you're willing to die for and then live for it. I love that. And honestly, the best way to do is 
when you wake up in the morning if you don't jump out of the bed every with the minute you wake up then you should quit what you're doing that means it's not your calling because when you find your true calling you cannot lie in bed ever period you jump out of the bed and you obsessed about it and britney and i were talking about it you know people talk about passion passion is for losers passion is for hobbies if you are truly want to make an impact in the world you need to be obsessed about making an impact that means you go to sleep thinking about it you wake up in the morning thinking about it right and that's what this group should be doing is asking yourself that i am no longer satisfied just being successful my impact is too small and that's one of the biggest problem faces an entrepreneur they become successful and they think they found the formula and they start to stay stay small mm. they need to know what you have done is simply a platform for you to jump from and go to the next height mm. and when you go there you make that a platform you never plateau the day you stop learning is the day you start dying mm. you never stop learning and just know every one of us whether it's britney or us me we came from extremely poverty i mean we didn't have i didn't have food to eat i didn't have a place to stay mm. and god becomes kind to you because you believe in yourself mm. right and there are going to be ups and downs don't think just because you want to make an impact in the world that things are not going to things are going to get easier for you. Why? They weren't just it was, wasn't just a straight shot up. Yeah, and so the moon express you just the express easy path to well. There you go. So if that is the fundamental belief is that every one of us have known someone who says you are an overnight success and they forget the decades of the pain and suffering that goes into overnight success, right? And the way I found out is that as an entrepreneur as a person who want to make an impact you have to remember just one thing you want to be alive mm. and how do you know you're alive you have a heartbeat and what does a heartbeat look like it goes up and down and up and down when you're looking for a smooth life you're looking for a life of a dead person i mean that's what you want please write that down i got to he's saying he's dropping so many quotes here and i don't have anything to write down cuz i'm running these slides but write this down if you are looking for a smooth life yeah you you're, you're looking, looking for, for a life, life of, of a, a dead, dead person life, which is what a smooth life looks you like you want a smooth life you're looking for the life of a dead person because doing life and having a heartbeat boom boom boom, boom. boom. and when you are at the bottom of the beat never ever worry too much just hunker down and you know the next beat is going to be up mm. and when you are on top of that beat never get too cocky because no the winter is coming <laughs> yeah. i love this all right but i want to i want them to learn more about sure. biome because if you are coming to the island we are now going to be giving this to all of our guests because this is the coolest invention on the planet where did this idea come from what is it what yeah. is going on so you know i was really thinking about what is one thing that i could do that would fundamentally change the lives of a billion people and i thought what if we can create a world where being sick is truly optional what if we can get tell people what's happening inside their body tell them exactly what foods they should eat what foods they should not eat what are the exact supplements they need what is it they don't need and imagine if you could do that scientifically so here's what we do you get a kit at home we get a few drops of your blood from a finger prick you don't need to go to any place to draw the blood a touch of a stool and very soon we'll be adding saliva and based on that we can tell you what's happening in your body what's your biological age that means it doesn't matter how old you are chronologically what matters is how young you are biologically so we could be living <clears throat> so stressed out that i could be 82 and jeremy newsom's running around over your 12 yeah. you know and that's true so i was 62 and now in the last year and a half my biological age has come down to 52 because right? of what because of eating right and the here's where your interesting thing i thought i was vegan i was eating healthy and you know i thought the healthiest food i can eat were broccoli and brussels sprout and cabbage 
And as soon as I did my test, it told me those were exactly the foods I should avoid. Oh no. Right, ah. because my, and it told me why, because my sulfide production in my gut was too high and these foods are very high in sulfate. I loved spinach because Popeye told me the spinach was good for everyone. Well, it turned out Popeye was not the scientist and his spinach was actually harming me. Man, I would love and to know this. I was eating tofu and lentils and protein. And that were exactly the things that were causing inflammation. Mm. In the minute I got rid of those foods, and by the way, it's not forever. It's only for six, nine months until your body changes. My, not only I lost 20 pounds, right? I have more energy now than I ever did. Not that I needed more energy, <laughs> but to me, my immune health went up. And to me, that means even if I catch flu or cold or COVID, I'm going to be very well protected, right? So basically what Wyom does is gives you literally what's your gut health, what's your immune health, what is your cellular health, what's your mitochondrial health. And then it tells you, you need to avoid these foods and why, eat these foods and why. And then it says, you know, you need 22 milligrams of amylase, you need 39 milligrams of curcumin, you need 72 milligrams of berberine. And literally, we take all those ingredients in that quantity and make those capsules on demand robotically for each month for you. So they make custom pills based on the thing that you're missing yeah. and send it to you. And every time when you retest, we say, oh, now you don't need berberine, you don't need this, and you need this. And we literally, every probiotics, Amazing. every prebiotics, every vitamin, minerals, herbs, food extracts, digestive enzyme, whatever you need, for the same price, you get everything you need. Right? Amazing. And to me, what's interesting is, it's the easiest way to keep yourself healthy. Mm -hmm. Because when you are sick, you only have one wish. And when you are healthy, you have many wishes. So health is one of the biggest assets we have. And if we can't protect our health, we can't change the world. Mm -hmm. And we talk about, you know, falling in love with yourself, right? That means the first thing you have to do is to take care of yourself. Then you can take care of the world. And as I always say, if you can't love yourself, you can't love the world. The day you fall in love with yourself mm -hmm. is the day the world will fall in love with you, right? And that's the, you know, always have to look at. Mm -hmm. And a lot of things, you know, I find as an entrepreneur, Brittany, that I think you understand. We have been told that look at the glass, optimist thinks of is half empty or is half full, right? And to me, it may never made any sense to me. What matters is don't look at the world what it is. Focus on what you want the world to be. So when I look at the glass, it doesn't matter it's half empty or half full. What matters to me is, do I care to fill the glass? If I care to fill the glass, do I care if it's half empty or half full? I'm going to fill it up anyway, right? So the question really is, ask yourself, what drives you? Mm. What do you want the world to be like? and don't complain about it, go out and create it. You can't change the present. Present is what it is, mm. but every step you take today can change the future you have. And that is really what every one of us does. Our past can't be changed. And if you live in the past, you get depression. You keep worrying about the future, you get anxiety. And the only thing that matters is today. What can you do today? The step you can take today to change the trajectory of where you end up tomorrow. And it doesn't matter how many mistakes you made in the past. When people ask me, you know, what would you change if you could change anything from your past? And my answer is absolutely nothing. And here's why, Betty. Everything that happened to you, good, bad, worse, is made you who you are right right, right. if you change anything in the past you would be a different person even the people who have hurt you we, yeah. this came to me in our last forgiveness exercise yeah. we did on the island it was like i forgive them to the point of gratitude for them being that way because had they not been that way i wouldn't have responded the way that yeah. i am i wouldn't be as strong as i am to be able to be enabled entrusted with what I've been entrusted with because I wouldn't have had the strength to blah, 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 yeah. blah. But I want to back up one second. Yeah. We're talking about you wouldn't change one thing. And I know this is hard, but the idea for this, you shared with me, yeah. you don't have a past in this. You're not a doctor, right? Mm. You aren't, you came oh. up with it because of something 
really yeah. painful in your life. And you could have just crumbled and said, well, that sucks. Or you could do what you did. What happened? So, I mean, as an, you know, you don't have to be an expert in anything to make, to disrupt the industry. In fact, once you are good at something, once you are expert at it, you become useless. You become an incrementalist. That means you can be 10% better than anybody else in the world, but you'll never be 10 times better. Oh, right? I can't. The, so good. The only way to be 10 times better is to look into the industry from as a non-expert because that's what allows you to challenge the foundation of everything that experts have taken it for granted. And when you challenge that foundation, you can be 10 times better, 100 times better because it's all about asking the right question. It's not about having the right answer. The questions you ask is the problem you solve. So ask yourself, what, how are they looking at the world? And how is it that you're going to be allowing them to look at the world differently? Because the question you are asking will fundamentally shift what you do, right? And I can give you several examples of that, right? Coming back to answer your question, I lost my dad to cancer. And even though we knew what could potentially save his life, I was looking at the research, having done all the research, and I said, Doc, all I want you to do is to simply inject this antibiotic is the pancreas because there is a very good research that shows it comes from the gut microbiome and they're sitting in the pancreas, allowing the immune system and protecting the cancer from the immune system. And he says, it's not the protocol. We will not do it. I say, we are going to waive all liabilities. We take, you know, and all he's going to die. Just do something. And he said, no. I looked at my dad, I said, dad, I can't save you, but I promise you that I will never spend a day not thinking about it, not solving this problem. And what really gives me pleasure today is we got the FDA approval to detect early stage, stage one cancer. Can we do a quick round of ones or applause for this thing, guys? Type a one, if that is the most powerful thing you've ever heard in your life. And <gasps> And interestingly is we now are developing vaccines for cancer that we thought were never could be cured. We are developing vaccines for autoimmune disease people thought could never be cured. And here's the best part, using the food as a medicine. Amen. So what we did is we did, went back to what we knew 2,500 years ago when Hippocrates says all diseases begin in the gut, let food be thy medicine. Yes. And by the way, we proved it now we published the research that shows people who follow the diet and mm -hmm. supplements, Brittany, their score for clinical score for depression came down by 40%. The clinical score for anxiety came down by 38%. The clinical score for IBS, which is stomach ache, bloating, gas, you know, constipation, diarrhea came down by over 40%. Are y'all hearing this? And diabetes came down by 30% simply with diet. And now we have shown that literally all diseases from depression, anxiety, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, cancers, diabetes, obesity, heart diseases, these are all linked to our diet. This is not in your gene. So don't blame your grandparents and say, I got bad genes. Just ask yourself, I am making bad choices. Oh, snap. Right. So... That's when I say making illness optional really means is the choices we make every day is what makes us sick. But I don't want this to be about me or my own. I want you to be thinking, what is your true purpose in life? Mm -hmm. Why are you playing so small? Just because you made $100,000 last year doing what you did, could you be making a million? If you made a million, could you be making 100 million? If you made 100 million, could you be doing billion? Mm. And why do you want to make that money? It's not because it's going to give you pleasure. The making money is simply the tools in your tool chest to be able to do more good in the world, right? So you know, the way I, you know, we, Brittany and I were just talking yesterday and I said, look, if you want to do a small good in the world, you do a nonprofit. If you want to do a large good in the world, you create profit because profit is the engine that allows you to scale. It doesn't matter you are the richest man in the world, your money is going to run out if you're not making money. 
that what you want to do is create an infrastructure, create a mechanism that every time you make money, you can help more people. And every single business you do can actually find a way to actually generate profit from it. Guys, this is not my like long lost brother. Oh. Is this not, what have we been saying this whole time? This guy's just turned it into billions. Like he's, he is, I said, you're like the godfather of everything oh we stand God. for as a group. This is the point. And I'm so happy you can see it done. I love what he said about disruption. I love what he's talking about, like your background. How many times have we disqualified ourselves thinking we don't know enough, thinking we don't have this or we didn't come from that or I'm blah, 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 blah. You didn't even speak the language when but you moved here. I'm, I mean, look, think about it. I didn't speak the language. I'm a brown guy. I don't talk like them. I don't you know, behave like them. I don't understand the culture, but guess what? What I have, what they don't have, is I think differently from them. Mm. And I look at the life as a pyramid. When you are on the top, you better be different from everyone else. You have to think differently. Mm. And I think the fact is when Brittany talks so sweetly, even if you are listening to a radio, you still understand what she says. And the minute you take 1% of your attention away from me, you don't understand a word. That means I get 100% of your attention if you want to learn from me. Right? So my <laughs> point is my thick accent becomes my asset, not my liability. <laughs> Look at that mentality shift. Look at that, oh, Neil. Brown guys are smart. You know what? You were talking about that last night. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so he's got this going on. Sounds like a full-time deal, right? How many other companies do you have going? You know, Again, I, I do Moon Express. That's literally going to the moon. Why would you want to go to the moon? And it's not about tourism. It is about protecting the humanity from potential extinction. Think about that for a second. Uh, 7.8 billion of our fellow species live on a single spacecraft. If our spacecraft gets damaged and get hit by an asteroid, we are going to get wiped out. Just like dinosaurs. Dinosaurs are much bigger and asteroid hit, all dinosaurs were gone. The planet did just fine. Planet survived. In fact, planet did so well, it created humans, right? So when we, every time, are so egocentric, I've had people tell me, you know, I am so worried about our planet. Planet tells you, don't worry about me, worry about your species, right? <laughs> uh, that means if you can leave this plant this spacecraft and actually start to live on the moon and then the Mars and then beyond our solar system into a different galaxy and beyond our galaxy into a different universe, because there is no reason to believe we couldn't live there. It's in our mind that we believe we can't. The day you believe you can, you can. The day you believe you can't, you can't. So it's all the mindset that changes. The minute you change your belief system, everything changes, right? And the belief system changes when you stop playing the old movies. And here's how the old oh movies get played, gosh. right? Literally the old movies get played. Every time something happens, oh, I remember this happened and now he's going to hurt me. She's yeah. going to do this. My business is going to fail. And the minute you think you remember and say, you know, that will never happen because I am the director. I am the producer. I am the writer of the new movie. I'm going to change the goddamn ending of this movie. It's not going to end the same way. And when you stop playing the old movies, you get to write a new movie. And that new movie will have a different ending than you ever thought, right? So just don't worry about what happened in the past because you control the future every single day. There is not one single thing that's gonna come your way that's going to change who you are. It is literally the smallest changes that happen every single day, change what you become. It's not the last straw that breaks the camel back. What breaks the camel's back is literally all the other straws that come about. So there is never going to be a day where you say, that is the inflection point. Every person you meet changes who you become. Every person you can learn from that you meet, all you have to do is keep an open mind. Oh my right? gosh. You can talk to a homeless person. They can teach you a thing or two about life. So just, it doesn't matter who you meet. 
keep an open mind and keep learning. Okay, where in the heck, type a seven if you think he has a winning mindset that you would bet on, okay? Where did you get this winning mindset from? I mean, you are, well, we've skipped through like 900 of your awards. I mean, that was we had to limit it to one page, but he's on the board of X prizes, Singularity University in like, you don't know what X prizes are, then you gotta just Google it or we can't be friends. Oh, um, I'm just obsessed with this guy. Oh He's my God. so amazing. And this is my neighbor, guys. Yeah. This is my neighbor. It's why you live cool places near cool people. Anyway, to answer where did your this question, winning mindset come that from? Is exactly, you just answered your question. Oh. That you surround yourself with people who uplift you, who every single day make you better. And I think we all know it intuitively. We become an average of five people we surround ourselves with. Find those five people who are not pulling you down. People who are jealous of your success. Mm -hmm. People who always telling you, you can't do it. And when you tell someone you're going to the moon, they don't tell you, no way, you can't do it. They ask you, what, where are you going to land the moon? What kind of fuel you're going to be using? They're always giving you, of course you're going to the moon. That is not even given. Now let's talk about what happens next, right? The people who are always there to uplift you. Mm -hmm. and. Honestly, what I've done is just keep changing the people I, I, you know, uh, I, you know, in some sense, interact with. And I think there comes a time in every one of our life, we just don't have time for the people who are just not pushing themselves forward. They're not dedicating their life to pushing the humanity forward. Mm. Right. Did you, and, wait, 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 please write that down. They're not pushing themselves forward. They're not pushing you forward and they're not dedicated to pushing humanity forward. Those are his filters for friends. And Brittany, I mean, you are a living example of that. I mean, I met you recently and I think, as I said, I, it was love at first sight. And I would call you my sister every day. I'm proud to be part of your family because there are very few people like you who come from these humble business. And when they are successful, they don't actually become arrogant. They don't suddenly forget the, where they come from. They go back and lift everyone up. Mm -hmm. Many of us know so many people, when they get the elevator ride and they go all the way to the penthouse, they wanna lock the elevator down. Mm -hmm. They don't want the elevator ever to go back down to bring other people up. Because literally, I mean, many immigrants, you can blame them. The way they feel good about themselves is by bringing other people down, not by lifting themselves mm. up. And that is a fundamental problem we have to solve is that when you find someone who's bringing you down and you tell them you're no longer my friend, you just don't belong in my circle anymore. I have outgrown you. I am done with this thing. We now. say, we can say, we voted you off the island. There you go. I mean, literally, I mean, <laughs> that is... So to me, find yourself people who are constantly encouraging you, constantly uplifting you and not letting you find a status quo where you think, oh, I'm a millionaire, I'm a decamillionaire, I am a hundred million. They don't get satisfied. They're always pushing you. Why are you not helping more people? What can you do to be bigger? Because there is nothing even my mom used to tell me that is really interesting. My mom will tell me, son, you're so smart. You can do anything you want. And then she would see the magical word, sky is the limit. And what I realized was sky doesn't exist. Sky is a figment of our imagination. When you go from here to the moon, you don't say, mom, I just passed the sky. When you go out the space, there is no sky. We create these imaginary limit for ourselves. And now ask yourself, how many skies we have created for ourselves. Mm -hmm. I am a woman, I can't do this. This is my ceiling. I am not a doctor, I can't do that. Those are all imaginary skies we have created. And once you get there, you will realize there was nothing. There was no hurdle. It was all in your mind. And you change your mind, you can change your life. Change your belief system on what you believe in. And the day you can change your belief system, everything else will fall in place. Oh my gosh. Who is ready to keep listening to this guy for the rest <laughs> of your life on repeat? 
Oh, so, so, I mean, you know, I left last night and I was like such a nerd and I was so excited. I left, I left the group of voice notes. Like, oh my gosh. But that's how it feels to be around a leader because leaders build other people up. You know, he has done so many amazing things and it, it reminded me because he's living as an example of what's possible. You know, he has done it at a scale. I have not done it. He is. I've done different things. I've invested in different areas, but you have done it at a scale that I honestly, I honestly didn't know was possible for me. And then I hung out with you and I was like, it better be possible for me. It's my, it's my responsibility to make it possible for me. And I started having different thoughts. I bounced out of bed this morning and I was excited. And so he said that statement and I thought, man, I have not bounced out of bed every day. And I, Tori and I were talking about it before this call. And I was like, am I not doing the right thing every day? Well, I started having all these like identity issues. And then I thought, no, I bounce out of bed when I have a challenge. somebody, no, somebody encourage me yeah. that sees it in me and calls it out. And that's the power of circle. And we, we're not selling you on this group. He doesn't even know about guys. We have barely talked. L listen to the things he says. It's the same stuff we talk every week. The point is to have a community that kicks your butt into doing everything you're called to do. That doesn't let you play small. I hear it in his voice and it's like, he's verbalizing so many things I've been like on the cusp of. And it's, hey, hey, Svetlana, why are you settling for only $300 million? Do you know how many more people you can be helping? Why are you settling for only $300 million? Like what, come on, Svetlana, come on. And that's, and even when he was saying it, I felt that old way of thinking rise up in me. It's like, when is enough enough? Blah, blah, blah. All the BS that I have grown up listening. Oh, money is your God. Oh, this, this, this. And it's like, no, no. When you can conquer your mindset, you can conquer money to where you don't have to even work for money. He worked, he told me 16 hour day, seven days a week. And he was explaining this company, which honestly, I should have already known all about all this stuff. It's horrible of me that I didn't already know this, but he was so gracious and he was explaining exactly how Viam and Moon Express works like a kid in a candy store. Like it's his first time. And you know, he's explained it to everybody. He's that amped about it. And so that is, I don't know. I just was so excited. I called my fiance and was just like, you got to sit at the table with the people who think like you do and want to do the things that you do. And it's been hard for me, I think, because I do want to like wake other people up that mm -hmm. aren't there. So what advice do you have? And then I want to take questions sure. from you guys. When you are awake to your calling, you're going down this path, but you're like, let's just say Not the biggest in the room. Mm -hmm. And you're trying to help <clears throat> your family, maybe, or your friends, you want to bring people along, but they're just like, saying the junk what what advice you have well, <clears throat> so first of all i mean this is going to happen you know you can't change the world around you but you always can change how you react to it and that's to me the thing is that my family is my family i can't change what they're going to do or say all i do is now is i understand where they're coming from mm -hmm. and it doesn't i it doesn't impact me anymore right so I don't worry about what someone is saying because it is their opinion mm -hmm. and their opinion doesn't count for me because what counts for me is my opinion of myself. The day I don't believe in myself is the day I have to wonder. So if somebody walks up to me and saying, you are really stupid and I don't get angry. I just simply said, oh, thank you very much. Someday you'll get to know me better, but enjoy your life. <laughs> Right. It doesn't bother me because it's not something, uh, you know, I'm not looking for validation. And that is what the self-love is about. Self-love is not about self-conceited. Mm. Self-love is about not looking for someone else's approval to do the things that you care about. Because the things you care about and that you love, other people don't have to understand and agree or want. You just do because you care about it and you want uh, to do it and you love it. Right? This message is sponsored by the Love Summit yeah. coming up in two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's so good. So, so when you need to sit at the table with people yeah. like you, yeah. thinking like you, but you're torn with 
pulling these people around? I mean, do you have like a percentage of time you spend with them versus the five? Like what's yeah. what? So it's essentially you're living in a two different world. In some place, you may be the biggest dog and your job is to educate and inspire everyone to uplift them. And then you spend your time with the people where you're learning and being uplifted to even higher level, right? And I can tell you this, you know, being around at Singularity University, being at X Prize, where, you know, you no longer people see going to the Mars and people say, that is fine, but it's still within your solar system. And someday our sun is going to implode. Then what happens to Mars? And you say, oh my God, we got to be really thinking about different galaxies. You got to think past <laughs> Mars. Right. You got to start thinking about different galaxies. And you say, wow, well, in that galaxy, and if you know the collision is going to happen when this our sun explodes, you need to really be looking at a different, uh, mm. you know, outside our Milky Way. And you start to think about it. You know what? If we really have a quantum mechanics, there is other universes out there that may actually be, mm. you know, in parallel playing with us. I love that. Right. So, point I'm trying to make is that there is no limit to what you can do. Your limit is simply about your imagination. The things you imagine are the only things you can do. Mm. I'm going to get to you, Rachel, in just one second. I want to point out. I know all of your minds are expanding right now. And I thought back, like, when did I actually get the growth in my life? And I got invited to Necker. Yeah. I was, I was super motivated because I wanted to save babies yep. and all the cool stuff. But I went to Necker and I hung out with a guy named Richard Branson that talks yep. exactly like him. And I said, what's your vision for Virgin Galactic in the next 10 years? And he said, oh, well, in 10 years, we'll be up there and there'll be a Virgin Hotel around the moon. It won't be on the moon. It'll be in the moon's gravitational pull. And you'll be able to go up there affordably, you know, affordably with your family for a nice holiday and la, la, la. And I was like, <laughs> you know, that's his accent. And y'all, it's exactly yeah. how he talks. <clears throat> so what happened was I would spend like all of my extra money to get to go to Necker to be around great minds twice a year. And what happened in my life is I won Forbes in two years of going, within two years yeah. of going there, Forbes sixth fastest growing woman owned company in the world because I normalized these kinds of ideas, these kinds of, but I, this is the first person that I've talked to that thinks about going past Mars, but it makes more sense. Oh my gosh, this is the kind of ideas that you're not limiting yourself to. And he's, he's freaking living it. I mean, his house is ridiculously amazing and beautiful and like glorious. And I'm so proud of them for what they've built here. I mean, especially we all went through Irma and, um, Mind expansion. Who can you be around to expand your mind so that you don't think that what you're doing is a big deal? That is something you need to write down. All right, Rachel, what is your comment? I just want to affirm what you two are teaching because I actually taught on this this week and was 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 sharing this. Like, so my program originally started in colleges, but now I work with a lot of different walks of life at all ages. And, and basically I said, when is the last time that you have identified and looked at your soul and figured out how you are best um, encouraged, how you are best led? And Brittany, you just said, when you were talking to him, you just said, you're encouraged when, when somebody pushes you and somebody loves you, right? And so what I said to coaches, business owners, leaders, When's the last time maybe you've taken the five love languages test? Take it in your family. I just took it with my stepdaughter to make sure that I was learning how to love her the best way. Mm -hmm. And so as business owners, as people, I just wanted to basically just gratify you both and and, um, lift you both up and say, you're doing amazing work. When you teach somebody how you need to be loved, how you need to be encouraged, how you need to be pushed, they won. It's like, they love the fact that you want, they, you know, you're telling them, right, how you're best pushed. And then there's this bond and people want to work harder for you. They want to give you their heart. They want to give you their soul because they know you care. Like not all of us are encouraged. If you yell at me, I'm done. I go into my soul into like this little, you know, room in my soul and I shut down if you yell at me. But if you tell me you're better than that, Rachel, you've got more in you. I believe in you. I will go to the ends of the earth. So you two are just pumping me up like 
came outside, got my book and just yeah, so in line with you, but I'm so blessed to be on this call today. Oh, well, we're glad to have you. You you have got to keep doing what you're doing because she's literally saving yeah. lives. Oh my God. Amazing. I'll Thank tell you all Rachel. about her after. And Neil with the hand up. Um, your audio um, is real quiet you gotta um, like hold it uh, my mother and my grand and uh, my um, mother-in-law were killed in hospital you know by just bad treatment and i and i i really never want to get into a hospital but what, i have people who get diagnosed with cancer what i i, I love what you're saying about biome uh, what would be a, a a protocol that you would recommend i advise oh. and give them help with obviously get the kit but any other protocols that you, you would recommend? Because I know you're at the cutting edge. Well, first of all, Anil, um, my heart goes out to people, uh, you know, at this time who have cancer, because there's just no doubt in my mind, in a decade, humanity will actually find a way to completely get rid of cancer. That means in 10 years, we will be able to prevent the cancer and to be able to cure the cancer, even if we get it, because we will know exactly what's happening for each individual. And it's going to be completely personalized and it's going to be precise for each individual. Now, until between now and then, I mean, unfortunately, there are not very many good choices. But I can tell you one thing that I have learned, that even the therapies for cancer their efficacy and their toxicity depends on your gut microbiome. So if you can just Google, there was a research published that they, they took the patients who were melanoma patients, gave them immunotherapy, and it works for about 25% of the people. Other 75% of the people where it didn't work, all they did was change their microbiome and through something called fecal transplant. And the same drug started working. That means even the people who failed, the drug failed, it started working. The same thing, by the way, happens on chemotherapy and many other things, right? So actually fixing the gut microbiome may allow the cancer therapies to work better. Mm. It may also naturally allow your immune system to deal with the cancer. So to me, the best thing I can do is I can't promise you and I'm going to not give you any hope that somehow why or more anything is going to actually cure cancer. But what I can promise you is not going to hurt anyone. And that means there is a good hope that it can help. But one day, we'll be able to cure it. <laughs> no, fabulous. And just, just a fun fact, I just want to reaffirm, are you the only person in the world who has the mining rights to the moon? Is that still the case? We are still the only company that has the permission to leave Earth orbit. <clears throat> and we have the law that it changed that anything we bring back, we get to own it. How cool is that? Yeah. And Brittany is going to get the moon rock when she uh, comes to visit me. And because that, that's what that's what we do. We're going to go visit him after Thanksgiving. I'll, I'll, I'll get a moon visit. rock. I'll come and visit Naveen. I'll come and visit. <coughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Love it. All right. Who else has a question? Jen? I have another question then. Yeah, hey, take it. Yeah, I love your energy. I love your enthusiasm. And it's very infectious. I just came back from Dubai and 99% of the speakers had no energy, no enthusiasm. But I, I know that your son has done some amazing work. Would you share what he's done recently? Oh, God. All of his kids. Well, you know, honestly, to me, our biggest proud moment is that, you know, I grew up poor and it's okay to have a hunger to do something. Our kids grew up in an extremely affluent family. I, I would be lying if I said anything different. In, but the fact that they are doing amazing things to move the humanity forward, right? Our oldest son graduated from Wharton. He started Kairos when he was 17 to actually go out and help other entrepreneurs act, uplift them. And then now he's focused on three companies all on affordability, affordable senior care, affordable apartment rental, affordable uh, housing. And into third unicorn now, he started a credit card now that allows you to earn points on your rent. And then it's a completely no annual fee. And you can use the rent as a down payment for you owning a home, right? Mm -hmm. And he got all the large laws changed. It's all called points? Yeah. That's all amazing. Our daughter, graduated from Stanford, Stanford Stamp Fellow, Stanford Mayfield Fellow, 
and start first company to remove the using AI to remove the gender bias in hiring and second company focused on women's health. So any woman who are there looking for a solution is called Evy, E-V-V-Y. And it's a vaginal microbiome company um, and literally solving all the women's health issues from the menstrual time to the uh, menopause, right? Uh, and focusing on that. Our youngest one graduated from Stanford, became a Schwarzman scholar, went to China and came back. And now he's actually looking at what are the biggest problem people have when they get the mortgage payment. Is because the mortgage payments keep getting sold and sold and again and again. They figured out a mechanism how to make it easy from a homeowner to be able to send the payment to the person who owns the mortgage and make it simple, easy, and painless. Mm, and fintech. So, fintech yeah. right? <clears throat> so my point is all three of them, amazing education, amazing things. And to me, there, if you can, someday we can talk about parenting. Our simple rule was our love for you is unconditional, but our approval is not. Think about that for a second. Okay. <laughs> right? That means you never have to worry, do we love you? But we've always told them that your success will never be defined by how much money you have in the bank. It will be defined by how much, how many lives you have improved. And I will tell you, I'm proud of you when you start to improve people's life. But I will always tell you, I love you, but I'm not going to tell you I'm proud of you. Oh, man. Right. And, you know, interestingly, we will say that your self-worth will never come from what you own. You can inherit everything, but you're still a parasite on humanity if you haven't created anything. So if you're not going out and creating anything, improving people's lives, you are a parasite on society. Just don't be a parasite. I love that. That's so good. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Thank you. Uh, Rob, got your hand up. This is Rob Wallace. He started a school here in yep. BVI. Oh my God. And they <sighs> had over 42 people graduate. Um, it's the first after prison reform program in BVI mm -hmm. history. And they signed a contract to take Anagata off the grid using their own people yep. educated here in BVI. Love so, it. Rob. So, my question is so, um, in terms of, I have two questions. One around changing your circle. So, as your circle grows, and your network grows. And Brittany may give a good example of how, you know, when she went to Necker, she met, met folks and they became her new circle. But how do you continue to grow that to the next circle? So, right, so like a Brittany or someone like a, like a Newsome, like they're, they had this circle, but how do they go to the next circle when they're already in a circle that's already excelling so much? And so this circle allows them to continue to uplift everyone else. And then Brittany goes to the next circle to uplift herself. Right. So there are always, it doesn't matter where you are in life. There are people who can teach you many, many things, how to be better. And, you know, once you get intellectually at a certain place, then you start to grow emotionally. And when you start to reach the emotional plateau, then you start to reach spirituality. Right. So my point is every day you ask yourself, are you growing intellectually? Are you growing emotionally? Are you growing spiritually? And if you're not either one of them, then you actually not living your life. Double your effort next day to make sure you're growing. Amazing. All right, who's next, guys? <clears throat> we got any other questions? I'm waiting for a special offer for Viome. Um, uh, I'm uh, Indian, so. Oh, you gotta oh come back to the island. Uh, first of all, Anil, we make zero money. We sell them at cost. And so a special offer for you is, I will personally buy it for you and send it to you. <laughs> uh, thank you. No, 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 no. That, I, I didn't know that. Really, you, you do everything at cost. Yeah. Wow. That's a beautiful And he thing. can. I mean, that's how cool is that? That guys, he has, I mean, how many kits have you sold at cost? 300,000. How many people do you think have been helped? 300,000 people. How many people have we helped and how long has it taken to, to give, get it out to 300,000 people? Um, it took us five years. And, five and years. I think we're going to get to 300,000 in the next three years. Now. Right. And then we're next we're going to 300,000 in two years. Then we're going to get next 300,000 in one year. <laughs> so how many millions of people will he help in his lifetime at no cost? And he can afford to do that because he's successful in business. He's successful enough in one of his businesses that he can afford to spend, you said $120 million. So far. $120 million so far to create this invention that has helped so many people. Absolutely powerful. 
All right. Zochi wants to know what's the name of your daughter's company? Evie, E V V Y. Is that the women's health one? Yeah. All right. And then I know uh, Crystal. Are you on, Crystal? I'm here. I'd love you to ask your questions you sent me earlier. Okay, I will. So let me hop on here to make sure I have um, asked them correctly. Um, so the first one was, can you describe something really hard that you've done in your business and then how you push through it? Um, and then if you could go back in time and tell your younger self something, what would that be? And then the last thing is, what is your favorite book? Because I'm all into <clears throat> just never stop learning. I just want to know, what do you know that I need to know? So in a book, like also your favorite written. book. He's also written several books. So well, nice. Um, Download those. So <clears throat> the first question was... What's something really hard in your business yeah. that you've had overcome and how did you do that? Well, to me, every day there is a unique challenge. So that means when you start a company, you know nothing about the area. So what I do is I learn, I read a lot. And that to me is the key. You don't read one book on a subject because if you read one book on a subject, the author's view becomes your view. Mm -hmm. When you read 20 books on a subject, now you have 20 different point of views. And the point of view that you create by connecting the dots from the 20 becomes a unique 21st view. And that's the only view that matters, right? So really read a lot. Uh, so to me, I can give you the you know challenges of the business are no different. Every one of us is going to go through a near-death experience. Mm -hmm. In any business, if you're not gone through the near-death experience, you haven't experienced growth. We talked about it last <laughs> night, I think. Somebody said, and I don't know this actually, but maybe you do. Richard's lost everything yes, 17 I, times. Yes. 17 times. Yeah, I mean, I was with him during pandemic uh, because we were the only one on the island and him and we were quarantined here. And, this is Branson, uh, guys. Uh, and I saw the first time a sadness on his face and the tears in his eyes that literally every one of his business was all in the hospitality and every one of them, including every airlines, everything was basically shut down. And the thing that saved him was a moonshot. A Virgin Galactic was the only company that was making no money, but the stock was $4 billion. And he sold that portion of that company to save Virgin Atlantic and sold save every other company. So it sometimes a craziest idea that was making no money saved all the other things that he was doing, or he would have lost everything, right? Mm. And that's the kind of a person who comes back every time is stronger because they have gone through the hard time, right? So to me, every time these ups and downs of life just teaches you that it all you have to do is hunker down and the next beat is going to be. I, I you know, I, I look at that because <laughs> I didn't know it was that many times. I'm not going to lie. I think on round three yeah. because I've, I've lost everything, all of it twice. And I think on round three, I would be like, all right, that's it. You're just a loser. You're just never going to make it. This is what happens to you. And I'd start believing this old movie on repeat and 17 times. I mean, you can look at your life like, wow, I keep losing it or wow, <laughs> I keep bouncing back. <laughs> There's two options. And I think just even having this conversation is going to help me in the future because I have always found a way to speak negatively to myself, always in my head. I beat myself up. It's could it be better, da, 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 da. But yeah, I just, this is helpful anyway. I, I mean, honestly, just stop playing old movies and what happened in the past is not your future. It's simply your past. How do you get past all the turds <clears throat> that remind you of your past every five seconds? And the way you do that is to say, you know, that happened. And okay, so I'm going to try something different. If you can just do one thing, believe universe is your friend. That's mm -hmm. all you have to do. Every single time, if you can just do one thing today, mm -hmm. that will be start believing universe is your friend. And that means everything that's happening to you, good, bad, or anything, it is for your own good because the friends don't hurt friends. Mm -hmm. If And when things happen to you, they're not good or bad. We label them good or bad. 
the effect of their good or bad won't be known for decades to come. Mm. And I don't know if you know that. Oh my gosh, it's so crazy. It's right? I mean, so interestingly, any one of us who had a breakup would tell you that's the worst thing that happened. And 10 years later, you would say, I'm so thankful I didn't fall for that. Look, I found the love of my life, right? Oh. But better story is it actually, I think it's a Chinese proverb. So this farmer who wanted to actually do something for a family and build an asset, bought a horse. And everybody in the village laughed at him that you spent all your money because you, know, you bought this horse and you think you're going to be a big guy. Week later, horse runs away. And oh. everybody is now laughing at him. So he told you that you're going to lose everything. And you, know, you are a complete loser. A week later, horse comes back with four mares. Ooh. And now suddenly you're so lucky, you're so great that you bought the horse. Now you have five of them and you know you are the most amazing person that happened. A week later, one of the horse steps on son's toes and he's now, son's toe is broken, he cannot walk. And now everybody laughing. You only had one son who's going to take care of you when you grow old and you loser will never have a son who can take care of you. Week later, <clears throat> all the draft people from the army, they're going to war, come to the village and say, every single person who can walk, a young man is going to the war. And he's the only son who's left in the town. And every villager said, you are the luckiest human being on earth that your son is with you because we lost all of our sons. Right? My point is, the event that happens is yeah. neither good or bad. It is simply is. And if you can simply change that to not label them and say, I universe is my friend. It is for the best. Mm. Ten years from now, five years from now, you'll realize it changed you and it changed you for the better. Mm, we're going deep here, guys. This is so I'm gonna share something intimate that yeah. this week. So I I woke up early yeah. and I went out to my porch and I watched the sunrise and I was sitting there and I had this this message downloaded into my spirit. And and God said, look at the mountains look at these islands. He said, however many years ago, these were, this was a really chaotic place. This was volcanoes yeah. erupting and scariness. And people were saying, why God, why? He said, and I made these islands knowing you were coming. And it was like, oh my God. Oh. And, and I, I got to share this with Jeremy. And I said, in the fullness of time past our lifetimes, things that we would label bad we have no idea the ripple effect of what God's really doing in his glorious divine plan. And so I love this message and it allows you to live this beautiful life because you're not angry or frustrated or calling things that and this and this, and you just are present and, and living in that abundant joy. And it's something to constantly be growing in because you don't feel joyous when you get sued or if some contractor does something stupid or you know somebody gets hurt it feels like it's your survival brain saying change change it change it change it change it but I think you've got to get outside of that and recognize it always works out for good as long as you're doing your best <laughs> I mean the only other advice I can give you is that we all worry about things in life and I figured out how to not do that and it is I look at the world, there are only two types of things in this world. The things that are in my control and the things that are out of my control. Mm. And things that are out of my control, I simply say, it is what it is and it will be what will be. Universe is my friend. I'm happy for it, right? And the things that are in my control, I know I am doing the best I possibly can. And it is what it is. Is, and it will be what will be the universe my friend and i'm all over and i think that's important because you can't just sit around in bed and think that somebody's going to yeah. just ship you a billion dollars yeah. to go do change the world with you have to do your best all right we have two questions i know yeah, we got to wrap uh, it up uh, soon um ezekiel is known as the crypto abundance coach oh my god he teaches he helps people become successful so he can change the world <clears throat> specifically in <clears throat> develop, developing nations but he doesn't just teach crypto he teaches the power of mindset ezekiel you're up Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing your wisdom. I'm taking notes like crazy, you know, it's, it's a blessing to have you both. So my question to you is, how have you helped someone from your family that perhaps didn't have that hunger or that, you know, mindset that you have? So what, 
What have you done to help them? You know, perhaps find that hunger and that, you know, passion that you have. Great question, by the way. <clears throat> and I give you an example of our kids. Uh, <clears throat> my first company that I started became wildly successful beyond anything I could have imagined. Um, at that point in time, our kids were very, very young. And I could have easily said, I want to stay at home and spend time with the children. Now, then <clears throat> instead of becoming a role model for them to show them what is actually possible, if I did that, becoming staying at home, now imagine from the, their perspective, when they go to school, they see the dad sitting on the sofa watching CNBC. They come back from school, dad is sitting on the sofa watching CNBC <clears throat> and tells the kids, go work hard, money doesn't matter. Hard work is what counts. And he sees the dad sitting on the sofa. All they are thinking is, I want to grow up just like my dad, sit on the sofa and watch CNBC. Instead, they saw dad starts a second company. He doesn't need to do it. He cares about solving the problems. He starts a third company. And dad goes crazy and says, we're going to the moon. And the kid's saying, dad, no company has ever done that. How can you be that stupid to think you can do that? and dad shows it can be done. And then dad goes completely crazy. And when he's now 60 years old, we're gonna change healthcare. Dad, time to ride into the sunset. Healthcare cannot be changed. And what are you gonna do about healthcare? You don't know anything about healthcare. And dad shows them how to do that. Guess what happens? The kids are out there saying, there is nothing that I can't do. So I, I didn't tell them what to do. I showed them what to do. <clears throat> thank you thank you so much thank you I love that hannah welcome to the stage hannah is oh my god i'm comprehend what's happening right now okay so my question is what helps you clarify your purpose and where you focus your time because obviously you want to help people you want to do that in healthcare you could do that in healthcare in a million ways so what helps you clarify like okay, I'm gonna do this in healthcare. Is it how big can I build this business? How many people can I impact? Okay, I'm going that route or like, how do you narrow it down? And again, I think Brittany and I were talking about that. Ask yourself, what the two ways to ask that question? What are you willing to die for and then live for it? And, or the second question to ask yourself is, if I had everything in the world that I want, a great family, the billions of dollars, what would I do? And if you do that, is what is gonna allow you to get everything that you want in life. Oh, wow, okay. I love that, that's that's amazing. Love Thank it, you. guys. This has been amazing. We've got a force for good challenge for them, right? Okay. You said it a little <clears throat> bit, in the, a little bit earlier, but what do we got here? There you go. Well, Brittany, you're the challenge challenger, so go for it. All right, so this was his idea. And that's when, uh, we, we, again, we've talked about it a few times, but today we want you to start asking yourself, are you jumping out of bed when you wake up in the morning? And if the answer is no, you need to figure out why. What is it that uh, whatever you're doing and find out that something that, I'm botching it, tell people. It's, no, it's okay. Quit whatever you're doing <clears throat> and find something that doesn't even make you think about staying in bed for another second. And you did that, you say this. One. I did it. And yeah. you know, it was for me, I am doing the thing, but I have, whatever, I'm just going to share with y'all. I've always been insecure that I might not be doing the right thing. Uh, I might not be doing it the right way because it has been a hard journey, so hard. And I didn't go to college. I always worried, not that I think I needed to now, but I always thought that maybe I was going to learn something that would have made this easier. I always worried that I didn't have enough education to make this journey, whatever. And so, <clears throat> I don't know, I'm tearing up on this. Like when things get hard, yep. I listen to those other voices and it's like, it doesn't make me jump in the morning because it's like, I, the idea does, but the path has been hard. So how do you make yourself jump out of bed when the path is hard? That is the, first of all, <laughs> when the things are tough, there is no easy way 
the only thing I know is that every time things get tough, I simply say, from my perspective, if this problem can be solved, I'm the only person who can solve this. I'm the best person to solve it. <laughs> and if I can't solve it, it is an unsolvable problem and nothing I could have done about it. And such is life, right? That means I am so comfortable with whatever the outcome is. Mm. And once you get there, you never doubt anymore mm. because you know if this can be done, you will do it, mm. right? And I have such a firm belief and there are times I, you know, say, oh my God, what next? And my answer is, I don't know what next is, but if I can't figure it out, no one can. And that is what it is. <laughs> it's a winning mindset. That's, you, you're not disqualifying yourself. Yeah. And by the way, I have no education in uh, computer science. I never went, I never literally learned, I never seen a computer in my life. And I went, worked for a computer company and I started a computer company. I have no idea anything about, I remember when we were going about going to the space, I said, how can you go to the moon? The damn thing keeps moving. <laughs> and they say, oh, it goes in orbit. And I say, good, so let's go. <laughs> you can predict, you can predict it. But no, that's my point. I didn't know, but there was enough knowledge. So my point I'm trying to make is, you don't need to know all the answers. You just have to know that you're going to figure out as they go along. So most people stop doing things because they're looking at all the challenges that are ahead of them. Mm -hmm. And I simply look at the one challenge that's in front of me and I solve that. And because I know every time I solve a challenge, the simple thing we all have heard, I will cross that bridge when I get there. Yeah. It's simply, simply that. So I wait until I get to the bridge and I'll cross that bridge. And the best thing I do is I burn bridge behind me because there is no going back. There is never a going back. I am moving forward and not going to go back ever. Because when you leave the bridge intact, next hurdle you see, you want to walk back right there. And you know there is no bridge to walk back to anymore. Mm -hmm. And you have to figure it out. And then you do. You do. It's amazing when you have to figure things out. You do. That you do. And that, and that belief in yourself has to be so strong that if it's not going to get figured out, it is just an unsolvable problem. And you're going to ice it until you forget it. You go to the Gosh, I love that. Guys, type a nine if this has been one of the most enlightening conversations you've ever heard in your life one of the most amazing people walking the planet. He is going to continue to change the world. And so are we. Thank you for inspiring us. You are you. just freaking, I'm going to listen to this like 900 times. Guys, go this week and may the force for good be Thank with you. you all. Love y'all.